Before I uh, give my presentation, I'd like to congratulate Vahan Garbushian uh -oh. for his incredible achievements in solar power technology. You may not know Vahan uh, very closely, but he's one of the forerunners of the uh, <coughs> CPV system, concentrated solar power technologies, which has been making inroads in large-scale solar power uh, um, technology installations and so forth. Recently, in fact, the president of the country, Barack Obama, gave a fairly good presentation about Ammonix. I did not know about it, Mahan. Wholeheartedly, I congratulate you. Uh, being an Armenian, it's a major, major uh, thing for all of us. Field of solar power energy uh, was almost not discussed about 10, 15 years ago. It's only in the recent past, maybe four or five years, that people have started getting into the field. About four or five years ago, I was finding myself a solo engineer doing all sorts of uh, large-scale, small-scale solar power system design. And nowadays, uh, uh, there seems to be a very great interest in solar power system design. Uh, four years ago, you couldn't find a consulting engineering uh, services that could do any kind of a tangible solar power design. Uh, today, uh, almost every organization <coughs> claims that they have uh, the expertise. <coughs> now, to understand solar power system uh, technology as a whole, you really have to have proper understanding of what solar energy is or the solar physics is. Uh, to really grasp uh, the concept as to how we convert light into electrical energy requires just a little bit of physics. When I was told to make a presentation about the physics part of it, and I said, my goodness, it would take me one week to explain what a photon is, and now they're asking me to do it in 20 minutes. But uh, Really, the crux of the whole uh, system is that solar energy that we receive, it comes in packets that are <coughs> called photons. Uh, the history of photon uh, goes to the uh, beginning of the last century, when uh, Max Planck uh, did some experiments to determine that light itself is formed from packets of energy and that Subsequent to that, Einstein proved with an experiment that light not only has a, a composition of wave energy, but also it has a matter associated to it. In every uh, uh, instance, when you take a matter and you take its most undivisible component, it uh, uh, becomes a unity or a packet. Uh, the term for it is quanta. Quanta uh, in Latin means how much, quant, quando in, in, in Spanish. Now, to understand really how solar power system, you really have to understand how, what a <coughs> photon is. Photon, essentially in physics, is a combination of a packet that has part energy, which uh, uh, imparts some sort of a frequency associated with it, and part <coughs> matter. In fact, they are interchangeable. Photon, in physical description, is the equilibrium of the, the physical uh, <coughs> packet of frequency and the balance of matter. Now, the reason I wanted to really give you this uh, description is because it's because of that particular uh, <coughs> impacted or compacted energy that is within the photon uh, that creates the solar power system physics <coughs> possible. Essentially, solar power physics that we're looking at, in fact, solar power technologies that we're looking at today or we're discussing, really fall into two categories. One category is based on <coughs> electronic conversion of photon into electricity, which is flow of electrons, and the other one is really taking the heat energy of the sun and converting it to a medium and heat exchangers into some sort of a vapor where the vapor uh, uh, turns electrical turbines and the turbine gener 
generate electricity. I'll not be con concentrating today on the solar thermal aspects of it, but rather on the physical aspects of what uh, the the actual photo cell or photovoltaic uh, uh, phenomena. Photovoltaic phenomena. How do I go? This. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me go back. All right. Good job. All right. Uh, you don't have a pointer here, but uh, essentially what we have in uh, uh, in <coughs> solid state physics is uh, really uh, essentially uh, if you look at the, the uh, Mendeleev table, <coughs> we really have elements, 18 of them rolled up in, in seven rows. Rows 14 represent uh, elements such as silicon, carbon, and uh, germanium. On 13 and 15, there are other elements uh, such as <coughs> phosphorus and arsenic. The reason I'm making reference to the table of elements is because it's because of the table of elements that we create this flow of electrons. Essentially, to keep the subject kind of confined to the uh, to the minutes that I've got is that when we take a silicon, uh, silicon has 14 <coughs> uh, electrons at its uh, final uh, outer orbit, and usually orbits that are <coughs> uh, really in even pairs, they're stable. Elements that do not have stability are the ones that have ev uh, un uneven pairs, in other words, they're odd. <coughs> So, silicon, when taken and fused with, let's say, arsenic uh, and boron, arsenic, for example, would have uh, an additional electron, and boron would have a, 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 a lack of electron. If you put the two elements fused together, it forms a, what we call a junction, a PN junction. At this point of, uh, at this junction, the electrons uh, at one side try to cross over to the other side because there's lack of electrons. This forms a tiny little battery. Now, I apologize, I know you guys have already gone through these things in your physics and electrical engineering, but I just wanted to uh, cross over this because this is really fundamentals of how we generate electron flow by means of photons. When you put these two uh, N and P junctions together, you form what we call a, <coughs> an electron barrier or Fermi barrier, where some of the electrons that are trying to cross across the junction, they do not have sufficient energy up until such time some energy is injected to the junction so that it would kick some of the electrons across and then the flow of current starts and forms uh, essentially uh, the electrical circuit. Now this is fairly mundane, rudimentary, uh, not even physics 101, but that's the way the system works. Uh, I'm having problems with this. How do I go back on this? Go page up. Oh. Okay. Okay. 